just about time. So, okay. So hello everyone. Happy Thursday, November 7th. This is our weekly insider number uh, 13. So always glad to be here um, with you all. So remember as usual that this uh, call is going to be recorded and it's going to be available in our uh, Horizon podcast channels as well as in our YouTube channel. Um, and as well, to please always remember to ask your questions at the end of the session so we can all have a good uh, Q&A session. Let's just start with our um, first department from engineering. Please, uh, Luca, if you would like to start. Sure. Thank you, Angie. Hi, everybody again. Welcome uh, to the Weekly Insider. So from the engineering office in uh, Milan, I'd like to report that uh, this week we had uh, uh, the progress we were expecting uh, to have in relation to the sidechain project. We are uh, working on uh, beta, and in particular, uh, one of these topics um, is the one related to uh, epochs, so represented by epochs, which is a very important um, topic. If you have already read the white paper, you should already know everything about them. But just to recap, um, the life of a sidechain is split into withdrawal epochs that are uh, regularly defined time intervals when users that are interested in withdrawing coins from a sidechain to use them in a main chain can create a withdrawal request. Then these are these requests are collected together in uh, certificates that are sent to main chain, and the main chain will be able to agnostically validate these uh, even without following the sidechains. And this is why we always remark on the fact that this system is providing massive scalability and decentralization to the system. And now, as mentioned before, uh, we had already progress on this specific topic. For example, um, some of the tasks in development right now are uh, up updating uh, the sidechain block info stored in history storage with epoch related, but also we are defining methods in history to get epoch data, enforcing rules to prevent a sidechain block that includes last e epoch mention block reference to include mm -hmm. other info related to the next epoch, and uh, uh, much more. We are defining the epoch validator and add it to history, uh, many other items. We will keep you posted on this because they are all extremely uh, important. I just wanted to mention a few of them that are being developed uh, at the moment. Um, now I'd like to pass it to Alberto because he, he can go on uh, with uh, more and uh, more specific also updates from the engineering department, um, also related to consensus, which is another important topic of uh, beta. Please, Alberto. Thanks, Luca. Uh, yes, uh, the other important talking topic we are working on is consensus, uh, and in particular, uh, its implementation in the in the site. In the, uh, so, uh, beyond the, the implementation of uh, specific rules for consensus, we have been focusing on uh, on another uh, semi aspect of it, because uh, uh, our consensus will have to take care about forks in main chain and so uh i mean uh the, the is designed to take care of it and uh, and to support this kind of situation uh but uh, we are taking also in consideration the possibility to have let me say uh, forks longer than the number of uh, main chain block references that are mentioned in a session block. And this can lead to some, uh, let me say, uh, undesired uh, situation. So uh, the discussion has been focused on uh, uh, trying to find uh, uh, an elegant solution to this. And I think that uh, we, we found one. And so we will be able uh, to, um, let me say, switch to the to the proper forks, uh, even uh, if it is longer than this limited amount of main chain block references that are going to be included in a side chain block. Um, so this was uh, another uh, important, let me say, step forward in the in the designing uh, uh, the consensus and implementation details. Okay, and uh, okay regarding uh, the core, uh, we have also scheduled activity to verify. Uh, the cause of the issue of the stacked node. So 
in particular, uh, we want to verify if the problem uh, can be related to a deadlock introduced by one of the latest changes uh, in the last release. For this reason, uh, we are going to create a Python test and make some temporary modification in the core, uh, I mean, locally, obviously, <laughs> to be able to recreate the situation also in the testing environment. I mean, when there are these kind of race conditions and deadlocks, it's very hard to detect them and to recreate the situation. But uh, uh, let's see, let me say, we've been focusing on uh, identifying the way to recreate it. And I think that we have found it. In any case, the problem seems to happen very rarely, so um, and and al almost only in tracking system environment where many shielded transactions are involved. So, I mean, this currently is not so, uh, let me say, critical. Okay, uh, last update is uh, regarding uh, uh, the extended model. And uh, uh, I have to say that the paper writing is uh, proceeding very well. And uh, currently, paper is already uh, 30 pages long. So, I mean, uh, I think that uh, uh, also from this aspect, we are on the right track. And that's everything. Thank you. So that's everything from uh, our side. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, guys. So next one is Alan on the notes updates. Yeah, thanks, Angie. I just got a quick update. Uh, we were targeting rolling out an uh, update to the tracking servers this weekend, uh, but that's going to slip a bit uh, due to scheduling and also um, some of the um, issues that Alberto referred to. Uh, we want to be able to detect what's happening on the nodes that are used, the Zen nodes that are used to process challenges to make sure that uh, um, we have notification when something takes place on those a little sooner uh, than we're getting right now. So we'll be adding those in and then coming up with a date, um, hopefully still this month, that we can get the tracking servers updated. Thanks, Angie. Thank you, Alan. Next one is Gustavo on the UX side. Hey, everyone. So we'll start with the help desk update brought by Spencer. Good morning, everyone. Uh, current stats on the help desk as of the snapshot this morning was uh, 65 items open, 12 items currently waiting for support. That's actually down since the snapshot. Uh, 50 items waiting for customer, and we have three tickets ready to close up because they uh, are aged at the moment. And we still have 14 items in pending waiting software fixes or other items. And that's it from the service desk this morning. Thanks. And we also been working on Sphere mobile testing, so it's been pretty much the only focus right now. And it's all on our part. Thank you, guys. So next one would be, um, is Jonas here? I don't think he is. Okay, so next one would be Lucy on the marketing side. Hey, uh, Lucy's not uh, going to be able to talk today. She's in an airplane, uh, so I'll I'll take it. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, sure. Go ahead. Okay, awesome. So good news. Uh, we had the community survey, and uh, we've surpassed 100 responses. So as of today, we've closed off the survey, and we'll be releasing the summary of the survey to the team and to the community, hopefully uh, next week. There's a lot of really interesting information here that was kind of surprising to me. So I'm excited to share it with everybody. Um, next, I wanted to mention that the faucet bot is up and running. So basically, if you go to getsend.cash, uh, there's now a little bot in the corner where people can ask questions. And, and the purpose of this was to try to uh, save some time, energy, and frustration for our support team and, and help team that was kind of getting a lot of uh, repetitive, simple questions. So we've had uh, thousands and thousands of uh, triggers for that bot, and hopefully it's doing its job and, um, you know, sa saving the team some time. So that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, next, we're going to be working to add USD to the Horizon store. You know, we have feedback that people don't want to spend their Zen right now because it's low and they'd rather hold on to it and uh, stay invested in the community and, and hold their Zen. 
So we'd like to add USD to the store so that people can purchase uh, t-shirts and swag, you know, with a credit card or through PayPal. So Mac is helping out with that. And as soon as we get the PayPal information, we can hook that up. And lastly, I wanted to remind everybody that we are running um, a campaign with Ultimate Nodes for 10% off node hosting. So that's available for everyone. You don't have to enter a competition. That's just um, it's just available for the community. So if you go to ultimatenodes.io and you use the code Horizon10, you'll get 10% off of your, your node hosting. And that's it for us this week. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. It's oh, wonderful. and a quick reminder, if you want to ask your questions, uh, we have the mentee code posted. So, um, yeah, looking forward to that, too. Thanks. Thank you. Next one would be uh, Dean on the legal side. Hey, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Um, on the legal side, just want to share a little uh, tidbit with you guys, because uh, I think it's a little bit of good news. So I can't go into the specifics, but um, the part that I want to share, I can get into the specifics with. So we had a call with a, a potential exchange listing partner, and they had some questions regarding uh, Zen and whether or not Zen is a security and, and where Zen fits within what's called the Howey test, which... I know most of you are familiar with, but it's essentially the U.S. Supreme Court test for determining what is a security under U.S. securities laws. And the good news, uh, these were very sophisticated lawyers from very big law firms, experts in securities laws. Um, and the takeaway was that, of course, in the spectrum of risk, so there is no guarantees either way, um, um, but... On the spectrum of risk, we were very low on the totem pole. So, uh, you know, they, they saw us as, let's say, leaning towards the Bitcoin, Ethereum uh, scale versus on the other spectrum, you'd have projects like Kick or, or, or projects that actually had an ICO. And so the good news, the first piece of good news is they see us as having a very low risk profile which is great, not just for, for, for this exchange, but I think it bodes well for future listings. Um, and, and that was good news because it seems to me that the fear of you know, securities law violations is subsiding a bit and we're getting um, less and less concerns and pushbacks from exchanges on that front. So that's good news number one. And good news number two, uh, issues of you know, privacy or, or you know, details about what a shielded pool does or doesn't do didn't come up at all. And so I think, uh, at least for the time being, I, I think uh, from the legal and regulatory front, things are looking really good. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Thanks. Thank you, Dean. Next one would be Rosario in Product and Engineering. That's a great update, uh, Dean. Thank you for sharing that uh, with us. So as uh, Luke and, Luke and uh, mentor Alberto mentioned, uh, mentioned key pieces of, of uh, the different components that are going on in the next uh, major release, and that's going to be the sidechain uh, SDK uh, beta. But I, I want to remind everyone uh, what, what that is because uh, we're hearing uh, very detailed, specific pieces. So uh, what beta is, is uh, protocol level changes uh, to handle uh, consensus, epoch, and cert creation, and uh, also the, the UI piece to manage the sidechain. So uh, that that's going to be uh, beta, and we've identified the, the specific tasks that are coming next and continue refining all that that's going to be uh, considered beta. Uh, I do want to highlight uh, that we are uh, we've already received a couple um, inputs from community developers, and that's been uh, truly uh, great to see uh, those uh, feedback uh, within our GitHub. So uh, those individuals will get their unique uh, developer. Um, and develop our T-shirt that's only available to those that contribute to our GitHub. And it's just a little token of appreciation uh, for their um, for their input. So great to to have that. Also, uh, 
I am restructuring uh, the way we are tracking projects. And last week I uh, held, a, uh, or two weeks ago, perhaps, uh, held a, a discussion with the uh, infrastructure engineering and UX teams and got buy-in from, from their perspective. So uh, it, it's just going to hopefully increase the efficiency and we're, we're going to test that out. And I've been working with Luca, Angie, and Ruben and along with the other, uh, with the respective teams uh, to identify all the tasks that need to be done and refine them and, and structure them in, within projects. And it's just uh, a measure to get us a bit more efficient. And also, Gustavo mentioned mobile testing. Uh, I do want to highlight that uh, we are going to be engaging the community for mobile testing uh, soon. So uh, looking forward to, to having the participation uh, of uh, our users and, and getting valuable feedback from there. That is it for now. Thank you. Thank you, Rosario. Uh, Rolf, would you like to add something? Yeah, I had the opportunity to be on the Crypto 101 uh, video podcast yesterday. Uh, thanks to Medar for setting that up. And we had some good discussions. Um, and one of the things that I was talking about uh, was some of the ideas that we're going to be working on developing for side chains. And in a lot of cases, and I want you all to kind of think about this and look for different opportunities that might be out there. Um, you, you think about why Bitcoin was created in the first place. It, it was created in a response to having uh, a very inefficient, poorly run, centralized uh, monetary system. So Bitcoin didn't try to work with the existing establishment, uh, Satoshi and the team, they just built a parallel system that worked better. And that's the opportunity that we have with sidechains. We have the opportunity to build parallel systems that not are only financial or cryptocurrency oriented, which uh, has been a lot of the discussion so far, but because sidechains have the ability to be uh, distributed applications that can uh, act anywhere, um, think about what are some of the centralized, extremely inefficient systems that are in place now, and is it possible to build something in parallel that people might use uh, instead of the existing system. One of the examples uh, that I have is, um, and when you look at existing systems, it's it's big bureaucratic companies, government organizations, um, and, and financial organizations, because they have so much uh, uh, things they can do. So instead of uh, my idea is instead of looking to work with a government to get permission to integrate into a system, build a parallel system uh, that works better. A simple example, I've used this example before, is um, you know, showing that you're of legal drinking age. Uh, you could show them your government-issued ID, which is the way that everybody does it right now. But what if there was just a simple app uh, that had a picture of that government ID um, as a backup, um, but ran it on a blockchain where you wouldn't have to share your home address, your personal information, and everything else just to show that you're of legal drinking age? Uh, another is think about all the different government documents that you have that you have to show periodically, um, and is there a way to build a parallel system that allows you to, under your own control and privately, uh, share those documents with people that over time they'll see it's a more trusted and efficient way to do things. So I know these are these are high level things, but want to think about different opportunities to build systems in a parallel way that work better, just like Bitcoin is a system that was built in a parallel way that works better than government money. Thanks. Thank you, Rolf. And now for the final part, uh, Rob. Thanks, Angie. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, guys, just to reiterate, uh, our priorities remain getting from alpha to beta. And you've heard a good amount of that from Luca and Alberto uh, and Rosario already. Um, and the, the little hint there that with beta, um, you're going to see an extended model um, to the sidechain model that you see currently um, from the original sidechain white paper and then what you see um, published in our alpha. So the extended model is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I'll just leave it at that. I definitely don't want to spill the beans on it before we actually get that paper published, but really excited for it and it's something to look forward to. Um, on the the business side of our, our our operations, really, it's all about new user acquisition. And uh, for me, I'm 
you know, a, a fanatic with statistics and I want to see our new user uh, rate, rate of new user acquisition increasing over time. And it's already explosive. So, um, you know, we're going to keep pressing on that. And then, um, like Gustavo mentioned, we're going to be delivering the Sphere Mobile release pretty soon. And um, Rosario's idea was to get this out there for community testing. So we've been doing a, a bunch of internal testing, but I think the sooner we get it out there to the community, the better. And oftentimes, the you know the best um, feedback we get is when it's actually out there with the community. So we're targeting that in the very near future. Um, hopefully, we can get a date out to you pretty soon. So those are the three things from the the engineering to the the business ops to the um, you know the product perspective of where I see us focusing our resources. Now, um, th- to complement that conversation, we're doing a bit of an org restructure internally. Um, really solidifying the independence between the Zen Blockchain Foundation, and the, the nonprofit corporation, and Horizon Labs. So in this reorg, it just struck me that w- we need to be clear about the different goals. And I think um, because we have so much overlap and you know, realistically, we have the same people oftentimes doing um, you know, the, the same work, but they're doing it across organizations that the, the goals can be a little bit unclear. So uh, to clarify things, Horizon, as I see it, is a community startup, first and foremost. We, we use technology, we innovate on technology, and technology brings us together, but it's a community startup. So we focus on community, we focus on uh, building that enduring community, decentralized you know, ecosystem, um, and then the, the technology like, follows to facilitate that. Horizon Labs very clearly is a tech startup. It's a tech startup that's extending the technology that we're building for Horizon into the commercial domain. So the, the reorg that uh, we're, we're kind of doing in the background is really to align these interests so that we can make better decisions independently between the two different organizations. Uh, and then through, you know, through this process, we're also tightening up our operations, uh, but keeping the teams intact. So the people that you know and love and see here on, you know, uh, in the community on our team are still here, still going to be operating, but we're going to have to continue to make our operations more efficient. Um, on, for me personally, I'm uh, giving a talk at the America's Blockchain Summit today in Panama City, Panama. Um, it's really good for us because we're focusing hard on Latin America and Panama specifically. Um, so I'm um, getting out there publicly now with uh, big players in the blockchain community, uh, financial services industry, government, so forth here uh, is very important. So I'm very happy to be doing that. And uh, next week, I'm going to be in Singapore for Singapore Blockchain Week, speaking alongside our friends at Flipside Crypto um, at the Coin Market Cap Conference, the Capital. Um, and really, the point there is, uh, Flipside Crypto invited us out because they view us as sort of an anomaly uh, throughout their system. So their system does an unbiased assessment, basically an algorithmic assessment across. Uh, dozens of variables across different categories, things like uh, development, uh, user activity, uh, market maturity, and so forth, and dozens of variables within each of these categories. And they, they give this you know, fundamental crypto asset score that we've talked about quite a bit here um, as a project. And they give each project this FCAS score. And we're an anomaly because we're ranked actually now top 10 in the industry of thousands of projects, thousands of companies, and we're ranked top 10. Um, so it, it, by the way, I was really excited to see Zen mentioned on MarketWatch. MarketWatch, uh, the famous uh, financial news platform, um, lists the top 10 crypto projects, and they, they rank them by FCAS score. So now we're up there for the financial community to see us as one of the top projects in, in the industry. Um, but Flipside invited us out to go speak alongside them in Singapore, really as the anomaly where they picked us out as being a top project before the rest of the market. Um, you know, and the difference there being that we're ranked something like 100, 105 in terms of market cap. But in terms of fundamental crypto asset score, we're ranked number 10. So they want to talk about that publicly. They want to say, uh, you know, for us to go up there and to publicly go through um, the evaluation criteria and why they think we're such a high, high quality pro- project. So really happy to be out there with them. Um, they're really great partners of the project. So anyway, that's all I've got today, guys. Uh, it's another exciting, super busy week for us here in Horizon, but we just keep moving forward. So I'm going to hand it over to uh, Angie or Jonathan for the uh, mentee questions next. Yeah. Hey, Rob. So we have a whole bunch of mentee questions. I've never seen so many thumbs up or engagement on mentee. So that's really good. 
the first one is are sidechain forks a potential issue in the future? Oh, that's a great question. I'm glad we have Alberto since he's been thinking about this deeply. Alberto, do you mind chiming in on that one? Oh, sure, Rob. Uh, okay. Um, I, mean, I was mentioning about uh, forks. Uh, okay, let's uh, um, put it in this way. Uh, first, um, sidechain keep track of main chain blocks and in particular main chain block reference we call them main chain block reference because there are uh, these are uh, main chain related information uh, of that for that specific sidechain so uh, for sure sidechain must uh, keep track of main chain forks and react on them because uh, just to be, just to make a very simple example, if I make a forward transfer, okay, uh, that uh, sends some coins from main chain to side chain, and uh, let's say this main chain block reference with this uh, forward transfer is included in the side chain block, after another side chain block uh, is um, uh, forged, and uh, uh, this forward transfer, the money transferred, is used in a side chain transaction, and this side chain transaction spends that coin. Okay. Let's take in consideration such uh, such situation. If the main chain, uh, uh, if in a main chain happens a fork, this means that uh, this forward transfer uh, may be in the new in the forked block. Let me say is not present anymore. So this means that uh, even the side chain, the the, the 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 next side chain blocks from that main chain block has to be reverted as well. Otherwise, it would be uh, you will have an inconsistent, uh, an inconsistent situation. So first, um, in sidechain we have to take care of, and we have to yeah uh, take care of such situation and um, to react on it by reverting the sidechain blocks that were interested by that main chain block fork. But moreover, uh, can happen also. I mean, uh, we are designing a consensus in a way that will uh, also take care uh, about the sidechain forks, because it can happen also in the sidechain that uh, you have a fork. So uh, in both situations, the system is designed in a, in a way for uh, take, taking care and, and work on also in, in, uh, in both situations, main chain forks and sidechain forks. So uh, the answer uh, is yes, <laughs> is it taken in consideration, obviously. Okay, thanks, Alberto. Um, the next question is maybe someone for business development. What are your current and future plans for Venezuela? Well, maybe I can... Oh, yeah, you can jump in. No, please, no, please, a Angie, this is for you. Perfect. Well, um, we have been pulling out efforts uh, for the whole Latin American division. Uh, of course, it's always a matter of education. So we're always very, very um, engaged into trying to uh, provide all the information first first and foremost uh, for, for everybody. Um, so we're always in try constantly trying to get people involved, uh, people engaged, uh, we know we have some serious competitors uh, in some different countries in Latin America, but we do have a lot of efforts and also we're always trying to engage the community. That's kind of like one of our first and most important uh, steps for us to, to engage more in, in Venezuela. Um, Sen Academy is one of them. Uh, for us to first build the first um, base of education and then going and growing uh, from there. But of course, Venezuela is the topmost we, we should have and, and steer uh, having more efforts there. All right. Thanks, Andrew. And uh, we're running short on time, so I'll just have one more question. Are there still any plans to add Bitcoin support to Sphere? Uh, Gustavo, do you want to field that one? Sure, it's still on our roadmap, but it all depends on the priorities right now because uh, of the resources we need to prioritize, so it's still on our plans, but not in the immediate future. Where can people find uh, the roadmap, Gustavo? Regarding these priorities, it's internal. Uh, internal, okay. Okay. Oh, okay, well, those are the three questions for today. Uh, Andrea, I'll turn it back to you. Well, thank you all for being here. Have a great Thursday and we keep uh, in touch. See you. Thanks, everyone. 
Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.